Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So we're going to be doing another store haul today. I know we've been doing a lot of store hauls lately, but frankly, I've been buying a lot and I've been trading a lot. And I know that you guys enjoy knowing what I'm getting and what I'm bringing into Speakeasy. Now, as I like to do in these store hauls, I always like to show you guys what's getting polished off and what I'm finishing in the Speakeasy before I really get into what's coming in. So we like to pay tribute to those wonderful deer bottles that are leaving us. And the first of those tonight that I finally was able to polish off this was really, really good until it got about two thirds into the bottle. Had about a third left and it really kind of got really oaky. At first it was kind of very sweet and caramel delicious and then it kind of went a little bit bitter wood kind of little flavor and it is now gone from the speakeasy. Next bottle that we have killed off in the speakeasy since our last time we filmed the store hall, Maker's Mark 46. Now I've always liked Maker's Mark 46. I actually like it better than the regular uh, Maker's Mark. However, I've kind of fallen in love with Maker's 101 as, in my opinion, better and superior to a Maker's 46. So even though this one's gone, I don't have a replacement and I don't know when I'll be getting another one just because I'm loaded up on Maker's in like special store picks and flavor profiles from the Virginia ABC, as well as cast strength stuff, Maker's 101. This is one of the most exciting store haul videos that I've ever done, or at least exciting to me. I don't know if you guys will love it, but I'm extremely excited for it. First of all, it's a day to celebrate in the speakeasy because I finally got rid of that Woodenville store pick from North Carolina that I got, the one that I've talked about multiple times that I just absolutely detest. I did have somebody from the great state of Washington who wanted to stand up for Woodenville and try it for themselves. So Jordan reached out to me and he wanted the Woodenville pick that I got. So I finally was able to get rid of that. So I traded that to him and he had something that I can't get here in Virginia and I've never seen. Old Forester Single Barrel from Total Wine and More out of Washington. This is coming in at 127 proof. I've always wanted a single barrel barrel pick of Old Forester. I've never had one, obviously. Y'all know I love the 1910, the 1920. And to get a single barrel barrel pick, I'm very excited about. So again, 127 proof. This one's coming out of the state of Washington. I haven't had it yet, so uh, it, as you'll notice, it's open. So we traded open bottle for open bottle because my Woodenville was open and I'd done it in some tastings. He traded me this, which he had opened and he just didn't care for it very much. So it was a win-win for both of us. Jordan, thank you so much. But that's going to be my first pour for tonight. This smells like toasted graham crackers and maple syrup. A touch of chocolate, almost like a s'mores quality to it. Some roasted marshmallows. Obviously, you can smell it's got high proof. It's pretty good on the nose. <laughs> for a first pour for the day, it's pretty strong at 127. That said, it's got some pretty good flavor in there. This has got a lot of spice to it. I'm picking up some nice wood barrel char kind of flavor. This does have some sweetness. It's kind of like a syrupy sweet sweetness, like a viscous sweetness, but it's not a uh, like a caramel or a vanilla sweet, like a dessert sweetness. It's, it's a little bit different quality there. It's got a nice long herbal finish. And then as the finish gets toward the end, the sweetness, a little bit of that, that kind of viscous syrupy sweetness there, it starts to come out just a little bit toward the end, but that herbal with a touch of cinnamon stays quite a while. This is a, a good bourbon. I'm extremely excited to have this one. So normally when I'm doing a store haul video, I prefer to go from like, here's what I got at a store one day, and here's what I traded for and got in the mail, and here's some more that I... Uh, picked up at this other store when I went to this place, whatever. Instead of doing it kind of chronologically and telling the story, I'm going to really kind of just jump from bottle to bottle to bottle and kind of get what I would call more and more exciting, or at least the ones that I'm more and more excited about. So the Old Forester, I actually am incredibly excited about, and I definitely wouldn't say it was the one I'm least excited about. However, because it was open, I wanted to grab a sample right now and start, you know, get my drink going. Before we get any further, I do want to remind y'all that in Virginia, if it's a limited availability product, you can only buy one bottle per store per day. Many of these things represent multiple stores within a day that I had to hit up one store after the other, trying to chase trucks, trying to grab stuff. Some of the stuff that I trade for or that I'm able to get, I wouldn't be able to do that without the YouTube channel. And, and a lot of you are supporting it. And don't think I don't recognize uh, every day that I do this on, on Whiskey Row on YouTube don't think I don't realize how uh, blessed I am and grateful I am for you guys supporting me, helping me find this stuff, because 
if it weren't for that, a lot of the stuff I couldn't get. The first bottle that I snagged is just a 750 Eagle Rare. Uh, again, 90 proof, 10-year bourbon out of Buffalo Trace. Fantastic bottle. Uh, one of the things about Eagle Rare that's really cool, and part of the reason why I do kind of like to buy them periodically, they tend to have a little bit of a variance in flavor profile. They're not true single barrels, but I don't think they do a whole lot of blending or anything like that. I think they dump them out and if some splashes into the other one, they just call it good. I, I can't attest to that, you know, you Buffalo Trace employees, I can't, I can't say that for sure, but uh, I think they just don't want to call it a single barrel, but it's pretty close to a single barrel for the most part, most of the time. So the next bottle is, is it's another Eagle Rare, except this is a 1.75 handle of Eagle Rare, and these are, are somewhat hard to get in Virginia. The, the regular Eagle Rares, they sell off the shelf within usually the first day. These usually sell out within a couple of minutes. Uh, because they're kind of rare. Usually stores only get about three of these, and they, they come three to a case, and usually stores only get one case, and that's sporadic. So was excited to pick up another one of these giant Eagle Rare, the 175s. So this one is Nelson's Greenbrier Handmade Sour Mash Whiskey. Now this is something that I did not really intend to get. I was in line to snag some special bottles you'll see here later, and it was there, and I saw it. I never had it. And it said sour mash, and I'm a sucker for sour mash because you all know I love my sour mash whiskey. So paid retail for this here in Virginia at the ABC store after waiting in line to get some other stuff, which we'll show you in a few minutes. Guy in line behind me, you know, he was like, oh, it's really, really good. So uh, I'm a sucker and I bought one. Hopefully it's really good. I, I don't know. This one's coming at 90 proof. It's labeled as a Tennessee sour mash. So I will dive into it at some point and probably put it up against some other sour mashes and see how it fares but I was pretty excited to get another Sour Mash. Now this is my favorite Four Roses product coming in at 104 proof. It's a little on the spendy side. The single barrel can be really, really good. Most of them I have had are, but they, you know, the single barrel, you can get different, you know, off profiles. This one is very, very consistent. It's very, very good. I always like having these on hand and I'm actually stocked a couple deep on this now. So, but I, I ended up picking it up anyway. So next up are these two wrapped bottles. I'd opened the box, but I hadn't actually opened the individual bottles to confirm I even got what I was supposed to get. And we'll open them right in front of you. So what, how did I get these? These were traded by uh, John. So let's open these up and see what I traded for. So I traded away an extra Booker's 202 in exchange for these two Cat's Eye products. So the first is a Nassif, Nassif, I don't know how to pronounce it, Family Reserve American Whiskey coming in at 107 proof. Again, it's a Cat's Eye Distillery product. I have never had any and I can't get it in Virginia. So to lose the Booker's for these two Cat's Eye products was a, was a good exchange for me. Cash wise, I think they're pretty comparable, the two of these together to the price of a Booker's. And the second product I got is Obtanium Light Whiskey. And again, another Cat's Eye product. This one's coming in at 139.8 proof. Uh, John, thank you for the trade. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy that, Bookers. This is the point in the video when things get a little silly because y'all know that I do giveaways with Blanton's. Blanton's is something that I can get fairly easily here in Virginia. We can get both the minis, which are the 375 mil, the little mini grenades, and then also the full-size uh, 750 Blanton's fairly easily at retail. So it's something that I can easily get and then and give away in, in various giveaways or trades. So I like to keep them handy. Uh, again, there's a limit to how many Blanton's you can get. You can only get one per store per day. So what you're about to see is uh, just a string of luck in hitting a store after a store after a store after a store. <laughs> yeah, this, this happened. So <laughs> I don't hardly ever drink Blanton's unless it's in a blind. I don't love it. There's a lot of other stuff that I'd rather drink. It's a beautiful bottle. It's a, a very cool story. And, and obviously uh, some folks out there really, really like them. And, and some of these may get used for trades, but, but honestly, we've been doing a lot of giveaways. We did the live stream where we gave away two blends. We did a thousand of uh, follower Instagram giveaway. Now the giveaway stash is fully stocked up and I can really say that all six of these are going to end up in someone's hands in the future and not mine. So earlier in the video, I talked about how I was going to go from like the stuff I was least excited about towards the stuff that I'm more excited about. And you know that we're at this point in the video and you're seeing Blanton's that it's only going to go uphill from there. Now this bottle was an accident. You see what happened was is that I was hunting for some other really special bottles that came out in Virginia. They just happened to have one of these still there from, from the truck. 
Uh, the other bottle never even came, which is why this was still there because everybody skipped that store because they didn't have this other special bottle. So I snagged it because it's a Weller Antique 107 for $50. So I grabbed it. Now I do already have uh, one Antique 107 opened that I got from my brother who brought it to me from Ohio. I'm very excited to grab my first Virginia purchased at retail uh, Weller Antique 107. Cheers! So I can probably officially say that this haul is probably the one I've been most excited for in my bourbon collecting, uh, except for maybe when I got my first Mictors 10. I have been searching for an Elmer T. Lee for a very, very long time, and I've never had the chance to get it. Whenever I have seen them, they've been at stores outside of the state of Virginia selling for $350, $400, and I've had to pass every time because I, I, there's no way I'm spending that much money on a $40 bottle of bourbon, regardless of how good it is. So I had to camp out for two or three hours to get this bottle, and it was definitely a, a labor, but I'm very, very excited. Now, some of you may say, well, David, it's open, and you're right, it is. So what happened was, is that Jamie and I did a live stream for charity a couple weeks ago where we gave away a Blanton's and three two-ounce samples of anything in the speakeasy. Well, when I was on the live stream, I actually told everyone that I had gotten this bottle and because I had literally just gotten it, I think, the day before. And when that happened, uh, the guy who won it ended up asking if he could have a sample of it. And I had said anything in the speakeasy, even if I have to open it. So normally I don't open the bottles until after I, I show them in the store hall videos. But for charity, I made an exception. So uh, Mario, hopefully you're enjoying your pour. We ended up raising almost $300 for Action Against Hunger. Thank you everybody who participated and made some very, very generous donations for Action Against Hunger. And to the winners, hopefully you've enjoyed your bottles. And I'm going to now enjoy some Elmer T. Lee. It smells like Buffalo Trace mixed with Eagle Rare. That's what it smells like. There's like butterscotch, some spice, Little little bit of little bit of caramel notes, very faint. Smells good. I've had some Eagle Rare and some Stag actually from Mashbow One, both turn kind of fruity as they've been open for a while. But this one has only been open for a couple of days, a week, maybe a week and a half, and it's already fruity. A little bit of barrel char. It's got a nice, almost like honey sweetness, like honey mixed with some some berries, and a little bit of barrel char. It's it's delicious. It's really really good. Is it worth $400? No, it's not worth $400. Is it worth $40 that I paid for it? I paid $37.99 plus tax for this. Worth that every day. For the first bottle of Elmer T. Lee, I would have probably paid about $150 for If somebody would have offered me a bottle of Elmer T. Lee for $150, I probably would have done it. But Elmer T. Lee is pretty good. Anyway, I was extremely excited. Now I actually own my own bottle of Elmer T. Lee. Did I just say excited to own my first bottle? Well, I'm doubly excited to own my second bottle. Weller 12 Year. So this was actually procured for me from a, a, a good supporter of the channel, Keith. I've talked about him before, lives up in New York. Uh, he gave me a, a really good deal on this Weller 12, uh, much, much less than, than right, what's the secondary price is now. Uh, definitely more than MSRP, but it was an absolute uh, no-brainer for me to say yes. So Keith, thank you so much again for helping support the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the video, for supporting the channel. It means the world to me and to Jamie. And until next time, find a bottle you love. <laughs>